for those reasons, um, I will be voting for the resolution today. And I do think this is an important national conversation and that increased unionization is a critical component um, of the work to raise working standards generally and, and appreciate uh, our uh, allies and partners at King County Labor Council from calling in and the work that they've been doing with us to advance these critical priorities. Thank you, Council Member Lewis. Um, let me just make a few comments and then Council Member Sawant, I will allow you to, to kind of close out the um, discussion. So I want to thank Council Member Sawant as being the prime so sponsor of this and Council Member Mosqueda for your amendment. But I do want to address what Council Member Nelson and Peterson have said. And I think it underscores why we have, when we have this rule about abstention and what that means or voting no. Um, the rule, as you know, uh, which we will be revisiting, uh, requires the council president at their discretion to look at what is material. And as I shared before, I, I will always err on the side of things being material because they will touch on that. I don't want to be the gatekeeper of that. Um, I will disagree a little bit with Council Member Mosqueda when she said she wanted to correct the narrative. I don't think that there's an incorrect narrative here. I think we just have different opinions and we should, all, as electeds, we all have that opportunity to share what those opinions are. And as colleagues, we can agree to disagree. Um, I hope that the viewing public and my colleagues don't see Councilmember Nelson and Councilmember Peterson um, in the words that they say about why they would not be supporting this resolution that makes them anti-labor. I think it's pretty clear, and I think the votes are always there, at least the majority, that this is a labor town, and of course we support labor. That's, that's pretty much what we do. Um, whether you call yourself a socialist alternative, a Democrat, a progressive Democrat, or whatever name people want to hang around their neck. Um, so for today, um, I do want to share that we do want to revisit what it means to abstain. The, I think the abstention tool is important. We don't have it in place now, but that will be in my committee probably in a month. Um, and I also want to share that um, I always appreciate that Council Member Sawant brings these issues to our attention. And um, we should also point out for the viewing public that Council Member Sawant's resolution came from Council Member Sawant. It did not come from central staff, though central staff is there to provide and assist us with amendments. Um, public resources were not used to draft this. Council Member Sawant and her staff did this and in conjunction with some, some of her colleagues. And I appreciate that because that's the kind of work we should be doing, whether we agree or disagree. So I'm hoping going forward, um, for at least for me anyway, in the next two years, that we can all agree to disagree, that there isn't a right or wrong, that um, we can all respect each other's opinion and that we revisit the abstention tool because I do believe that council members should have the tool on resolutions to abstain. And I'm hoping that the viewing public sees that not as anti or against or being punitive or retaliatory, but merely a difference of opinion, particularly that council member Peterson and Nelson took the time to explain their vote. And that's what I really appreciate is when people take the time to explain their vote. And I know that council member Sawan in the past has often asked that her colleagues explain their vote. And so I wanna thank council member Peterson and Nelson for doing that. Um, so with that, Council Member Salant, I will let you close us out on this discussion and then we will go to a vote on the amended resolution. Council Member Salant. Thank you. I certainly agree with Council President Juarez that uh, all elected officials should be open and I appreciate Council Members weighing in on why they are going to vote no or stay out. I'm, I'm not exactly sure how that works. But I don't agree that there isn't a right and wrong. There is a right and wrong, but that right and wrong depends on which side you're on. You know, what you define as right or wrong depends on which side you're on. Because in the context of a deeply divided system like capitalism, where the overwhelming amount of wealth and power resides in the hands of a few billionaires and the corporate executives and the political establishment and the corporate media that serve them, and the overwhelming work, labor, is being done by tens of millions, hundreds of millions, billions of workers who see very little to nothing of the fruits of that labor, political actions by elected officials cannot be neutral in the face of this deep, deep inequality. And this is the headquarters of Starbucks, hundreds of Starbucks workers, thousands maybe, I have not counted, it would be great to know how many, thousands of coffee shop workers, tens of thousands of workers in the fast food industry. This is very much city business. You cannot say, if you're an elected official, you cannot say you're pro-labor and then vote no or withhold your vote on this resolution. It simply doesn't work. I mean, you can say that, 
you have every right to say that, but my message is to working class people in Seattle, do not buy that. That is That doesn't make any sense. If you say you're pro-labor, then you have to vote yes on a resolution like this because it's not a neutral situation. And if Seattle is a labor town, it is only because rank and file workers fight for what's just and what's right, fight for because of the history of fighters in the labor movement and the way we fought for the $15 an hour minimum wage, the Amazon tax, and so many other renters' rights, both union rank and file and non-unionized rank and file workers are the reason that we have won this, and yes, socialists also. Uh, you want to talk about city business? The Amazon tax that our movement fought for in the middle of the Black Lives Matter movement with phenomenal support from the black community and from all working class people. We won that in 2020 because of the grassroots tax Amazon movement that we built. That was city business. That came for a vote. Council members Peterson and Juarez voted no. Uh, another city business item uh, last December, that was the vote to uh, end scandalously and the hazard pay, $4 an hour hazard pay for grocery workers, our hardworking frontline workers. And all eight Democrats at the, at the time and all the current council members who were in office last year, council Democrats uh, who were in uh, office last year, voted in December in an attempt to end that $4 an hour hazard pay. Now that pay is surviving but not thanks to the council democrats so all these examples show you know that when council members say it is not city business what they really mean is that it is city business but they're just not on the side that you want us to be on because all of those votes were also city business the amazon tax was about homelessness and a, a building affordable housing but you still voted no on it so i'm not sure uh, how you can say that you're pro labor and you're voting no or you're staying out of it um, in the 1930s and 40s, a unionization drive of millions swept the United States. Millions of auto workers occupied their factories, locking out the bosses until their union was recognized. General strikes involving whole cities was organized by labor fighters led by socialists in Minneapolis, San Francisco, and Toledo. That wave of militant labor organizing led to new unions being formed into the Congress of Industrial Organizations, the CIO, and tens of millions of American workers winning unprecedented improvements in living standards. Today, many of those fighting tactics have been forgotten, which has led to a decline in the labor movement. And you can see the, the, the political outcomes from having political establishment uh, politicians take certain positions is a reminder that we need the fighting tactics back. The uh, Starbucks union busting is a reminder why we need a fighting tact fighting strategy. Starbucks has nearly 9,000 stores nationally that are directly company owned or over 15,000 if you include grocery workers and other grocery stores and other affiliated locations. It is a behemoth of a corporation with $29 billion in revenue last year. If Starbucks workers succeed in building a union, it will be unprecedented in the fast food industry, and it will be the first successful union drive on this giant scale in the private sector in decades. That is what is at stake, and that is why I'm proud to have brought this resolution alongside Starbucks Workers United. Council President Juarez, you're right. We worked on this resolution. My staff and I worked on it alongside Starbucks Workers United and Starbucks workers themselves and other socialists and allies in the labor movement. And let's also understand what it will take to rapidly organize as many Starbucks stores as possible. Workers will need a class struggle approach to win. We cannot have any illusions that the bosses will be on our side. They will fight ferociously against us. The bosses will tell workers they don't need a union, that they are partners in the company, that unions just want your dues money and don't do anything. But what does it mean to be a partner with a CEO who makes $20 million while you struggle to pay the rent, or if they can fire you for trying to unionize? And if unions allegedly don't do anything, then why is Starbucks terrified of them? In Seattle, our working class movement has beaten Amazon and Starbucks and Seattle's wealthiest corporate landlords again and again, not by trying to convince the executives to be kind, but by getting organized and fighting back. That is what we will need. That is why I am proposing the idea of a national day of action to Starbucks workers so that we can help spread the union movement to hundreds of stores 
because that's what it's needed. We know that power at the bargaining table comes from power outside, and so we need to be coordinated nationwide, and most urgently, we need walkouts and solidarity rallies in cities across the nation, including Seattle, to demand that Starbucks exec executives give the fired Memphis wor wor workers their jobs back, and it's important to fight for this and win this, not only for the Memphis workers, and, and that's important in itself, but because if we don't fight back this time, then they will use the firing tactic to intimidate workers in other cities as well. So we have have to push back on this and we know that it's only when the working class fights that we can win thank you to starbucks workers in seattle and everywhere let's keep fighting solidarity thank you thank you councilman salon i see that councilman strauss has his hand up and then we're going to close argument and our um, discussion on this resolution oh uh, thank you councilmember wise i wasn't going to speak up today because i think all of my colleagues summarized the points very well it goes without saying that i am supporting union workers and the right to unionization i have yet to miss a strike line with our brothers and sisters who are uh, striking to get better wages and protections i just point of clarification point of order uh a number of times we have been uh our political party has been discussed and i just wanted to clarify that this is in fact a nonpartisan office Thank you, Council President. Thank you. So with that, um, I see Councilor Mosquet, I did not see. Is that a new, do you want to a few comments? Or are you done? Um, Council President, I, I know you wanted to call the question. Looking forward to voting for this, as I already noted. But I think it's important, since the two pieces of legislation that I prime sponsored were called into question, that we clarify, um, especially that uh, it actually undermines the effort to try to tear down folks who are wanting to support unionizing efforts and wanting to support a broader movement for progressive values um, to, to continue down this line. Uh, as the prime sponsor of Hazard Pay over a year ago, that legislation went into effect working uh, over a three week period with grocery workers to make sure that our city was the first in Washington state to implement Hazard Pay for grocery workers. Our city is the one who continues to have the longest Hazard Pay on the books. We extended that four times. It was always intended to be temporary. Uh, at the, uh, in partnership with those who are working on getting longer term protections, that was known to be a short term uh, fix as we work to address longer term health and safety issues. And after four times of having it extended, we said if there was changes to Omicron, if there was, excuse me, if there was changes to uh, uh, COVID, that we would revisit whether or not it needed to be sunset and between the passage of the um, expiration of the hazard pay and the following week, Omicron numbers ticked up. Always said that we would continue to look at the data and implement it if necessary. Uh, so I just wanna make sure that we're clear today as we support workers in our city, in our region, across our country, that we continue to show solidarity uh, for broader organizing efforts. And wanna make sure that we are clear about the past, especially on the bills that I've prime sponsored, uh, where we're continuing to build opportunities for folks to have good living wages, expand opportunities to organize, like through today's call for this resolution and that we stop with the misinformation. So looking forward to having this passed and uh, supporting the Starbucks workers and our broader labor movement who has been supportive of the amendment that I brought forward today and the work that I did uh, throughout last year. Okay, so we are gonna, Council Member Sawant, we are gonna go ahead and close the discussion now. Um, uh, well, I'm the prime sponsor of the bill and so I do want to respond very briefly. Council I'm Sawant, only going to respond I, by saying that that was not misinformation. That was okay. not misinformation, that was a fact. All of the Democrats who were on the council last December voted to end the hazard pay. It was Mayor Durkin who and vetoed Council that Member bill. And so I, all that we have hey, the longest. Can I have the clerk mute everybody? Because apparently state. people can't be here. Clerk, can you please times, mute it? Which I'm still proud to clerk, continue to do. Please mute it. Mute everybody. So, are we all going to take a breath here? Okay. Okay, Madam Clerk, can we go back on the record? Let us know. Madam Clerk. Uh, let me see if I can get this unmuted, thank you. Okay, and then I'm gonna make a few comments and we're gonna go to a vote. Tell me when.
I believe we should be able to unmute ourselves now. Yes. Okay, great. So can and everybody can take hear a vote? me? Okay, good. So I did that because I don't want this to turn into what it just happened. Again, members are reminded that it's never in order to use insults in debate. It is net members will confine their remarks to the merits of the pending question, not use former examples of how people may or may not have voted in the past. I am going to share two things. I want to thank Councilor Sawant for the material and the resolutions and the legislation that has come out of her office. Thank you, Councilor Sawant. And I also want to thank Councilor Mosqueda for bringing forward hazard pay and jumpstart. And I don't want to go down this rabbit hole again. I'm just trying to get this resolution passed, which is a simple resolution regarding Starbucks and unionization. So with that, will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the resolution as amended? Want? Yes. Strauss? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Morales? Mosqueda? Aye. Nelson? Peterson? Council President Juarez? Aye. Six in favor, none opposed. Thank you. The resolution is adopted and the chair will sign it. Will the clerk please affix my signature to the legislation on my behalf? All right, let's finish the agenda here. We got item number two. I understand it's Council Member Lewis. Will the clerk please read the item into the record? Agenda item two, the report of the Public Assets and Homelessness Committee, Council Bill 120264. 